906 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. Ken Weaver in the newsroom back behind the glass producing Mac Mori. Hello, Mac. Hello, hello, hello. Did you wear Chiefs gear yesterday? You know what? I have a confession to make. I didn't wear any yesterday. What? Totally forgot. I had to be here early. I took a weird midday nap and then I just, yeah. So, I mean... So we're technically done. It's technically over. I mean, I brought it today. I brought my Super Bowl ring, one of the three, but I think it's all for naught. I think I messed this up after, I'm, what was it, 44 days. I'm pretty disappointed. I know. You. I know. Me too. <laughs> me too. Pretty disappointed. I wanted the 50. You ruined it. No, I did. There's no question. You broke my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you too, Chris. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to get that out of the way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> early. So we didn't talk about that off the air. No, we didn't. No, yeah. No. Uh, this is actually, yeah, this is breaking news. No, no, what, what me and Mac were talking about <laughs> off the air was <laughs> before we got, before we, before we get on the show, we always talk about the most important things of the day. Can you tell people what the first thing I said to you was before <laughs> we got on the air? You didn't, are you talking about you saying, wouldn't it be awesome to be on the Trump jury trial? <laughs> oh, yes, yes. I said I would love to be on the Trump jury. We have day two of jury selection. It's underway for the trial of the century. And I said to Mac, I said, I would love to be on that jury. It'd be your dream job. Oh, my gosh. They'd be like, uh, are you familiar with Donald Trump? And I'd be like, who? Who's that? Never heard of him. Never heard of him. Do you get in trouble for lying during jury selection? Probably. Nah. I think it's a gray area. It's a gray, yeah, exactly. it's a gray area. I think it's a gray area. I would want to. I would want to do it. I would want to do it. Uh, yeah, never heard of him. Never heard of him. <laughs> this has got to be the hardest jury selection in human history. They they say that this is the trial of the century. I don't think it's as big as the OJ trial. I will say, I guarantee. Well, that was a different century. But fair. Dang. Dang. <laughs> it's a different century. All right. All right. <laughs> Where's Mason? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is true. The biggest trial of this century so far. So yeah, we're, far. We're pretty early, yeah. It's pretty early. Uh, but I would I would imagine the only thing uh, that it really is comparable would be jury selection, right? Because nobody in 96 didn't know who OJ was. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and nobody in 2024 doesn't understand what's going on here. Yeah. One way or the other. Yeah, exactly. Depending either, on, yeah. You either have just extreme full-blown TDS or you're like, we're going to make this damn country great again, whether you like it or not. Now, there was some interesting developments yesterday in the trial of the century so far. Uh, Trump speaking after he left the courtroom yesterday, and he, he brought up the fact that uh, the judge is not going to allow him to attend Barron's graduation, which is wild. So thank you very much. Uh, we had some amazing things happen today. As you know, my son has graduated from high school, and it looks like the judge will not let me go to the graduation of my son, who's worked very, very hard. Uh, he's a great student. He's very proud of the fact that he did so well. I was looking forward for years to have a graduation with his mother and father there. And it looks like the judge isn't going to allow me to escape this scam. It's a scam trial. Yep, it's a scam. It's a scam trial. He can't go to Barron's graduation. Now, I will point out, I think Barron needs to get on Twitter. Uh, Trump has a gag order. Barron does not. And could you imagine Barron's rage right now for what they've done to his father? Can you imagine that? There's a meme online where, where it's Baron Trump side profile looking like Alexander the Great. The kid's chiseled, right? And it says, he saw it all. He saw it all. I pray the world can handle his wrath. Well, the judge has apparently never seen that meme. I, I wish that Baron would get on Twitter and just go full scorched earth. And it's not just Baron Trump's graduation that he's going to miss. Uh, there's also a, a, a little thing going on at the Supreme Court by ways of presidential immunity next week that Trump is not going to be allowed to go to either. In addition, as you know, next Thursday, we're before the United States Supreme Court at a very big hearing on immunity. And this is something that we've been waiting for a long time. And the judge, of course, is not going to allow us. He's a very conflicted judge. 
and he's not going to allow us to go to that. He won't allow me to leave here for a half a day, go to D.C. and go before the United States Supreme Court because he thinks he's superior, I guess, to the Supreme Court. I, I love that part. The judge thinks he's superior, I guess, than the Supreme Court. Because he thinks he's superior, I guess, to the Supreme Court. And we got a real problem with this judge. We have a real problem with a lot of things having to do with this trial, including the DA. Because you go right outside and people are being mugged and killed all day long. And he's sitting here all day with about 10 or 12 prosecutors over nothing. Over nothing. Over what, over what people say over what people say shouldn't be a trial. So I just want to thank you very much. But uh, that I can't go to my son's graduation or that I can't go to the United States Supreme Court, that I'm not in Georgia or Florida or North Carolina campaigning like I should be, it's perfect for the radical left Democrats. That's exactly what they want. This is about election interference. That's all it's about. Thank you very much. No, it, it does. It does feel like election interference. When you talk about the man can't campaign, he can't go to the Supreme Court. Personally, I think that he should skip court and go to the graduation and get arrested for that. Imagine the headlines, Trump arrested, skips court for son's graduation. Could you imagine that? Like, wouldn't that be amazing? Think about the poll numbers, the bump that would happen. <laughs> Trump jailed for attending son's graduation. Would that not make everyone understand exactly what time it is? Tim Scott uh, was talking about the, the trials that Trump is under and how the, this is just a sham trial. And, and actually what it's doing, what the injustice that we're seeing on full display on TV news is doing, it's driving black voters to the GOP. Tim Scott, uh, he, he's saying that, you know, black voters want a fair justice system. And, and he's talking and he says, you know, there's no doubt that when you see a nearly 75% increase in black men wanting to support President Trump, that's not an insignificant increase. He said that to Breitbart News uh, during a sit-down, and he's talking about the fact that Trump's trials, a lot of people think that the justice system is unfair. A lot of people in the black community think that the justice system is unfair. So when they see Trump being unfairly persecuted, not prosecuted, persecuted they go this is this is too much this is too much tim scott continues he says the simple way of understanding what's happening is if he was not running for president he would not be on trial that's why i started with election engineering the facts of the case are frankly the expiration of this case of this being a legal challenge in and of itself a point we should all reflect upon. Who wants a justice system that chooses the person you go after based on whether you like them or not or based on what office they're running for or not? Just imagine if this was not about the red party Republicans versus the blue party. Imagine that this was a racial issue. Put a black person in the position where the legal system is coming after them because of the color of their skin and because of what they represent for hope in America. That, to me, is the easiest way to understand how disastrous this would be if not for the partially woven into the system in New York, specifically against President Trump. So Tim Scott is, is making this argument that people view this the same way they would view it if it was racism. It's an interesting, it's an interesting analogy. I, I don't think it's quite there, but I think that people do look at the justice system as unfair, especially in the black community, and they look at what's happening to Trump, and they can see that this is, this is absolutely unfair. Trump was speaking on his way uh, into the court uh, this morning, and uh, he says this trial is a disgrace. Thank you, very much, sir. Thank you very much. This is a trial that should have never been brought. It's a trial that is being looked upon, looked at all over the world, they're calling. They're, they're looking at it and analyzing it. Every legal pundit, every legal scholar said this trial is a disgrace. It's a disgrace. It is a disgrace. But people see that. People see that. And the polls reflect it. The, the polls reflect that uh, people are supporting Trump despite all of this. Trump leads Biden by 5.3%, even with RFK Jr. included. A real, real clear polling average shows. Uh, Trump is up. The latest, the latest average of polling by re real clear polling 
found that in a three-way race between Trump, Biden, and RFK, Trump is in the lead by 5.3%. And the poll average covers between January 22nd and April 2nd. It has Trump in the lead with 41%. Biden has 35. Kennedy has 11. Of the five polls included in this time frame, Trump led in all of them. His lead over the other candidates ranged from four points in a Harvard-Harris poll to seven points seen in a separate survey from the same pollster. Now, in a five-way race, which brings in Cornell West and Jill Stein, Trump leads by 1.8% in an average of the polls from March 21st to April 11th. In a two-way race between Biden and Trump, Trump leads by 0.2% and polls conducted between March 21st and April 11th. So when you throw in RFK, you throw in the third-party candidates, it does look like it's helping Trump. I do think that Trump leading by 0.2% is uh, quite low. Quite low, if you would ask me. W when you look at all of the destruction going on in this country, from the border to the economy and everything in between, 0.2% feels criminally low. Uh, the averages also come as Trump entered the courtroom Monday morning to begin the criminal trial brought by Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg. So I, I expect those numbers to go up as we, we see the trial with these 34 felony counts uh, play out. I expect that to happen. It seems like none of these things keep Trump down for long, right? Uh, they, they often give him a bump in the numbers. And in the latest New York Times Siena poll, Americans say Biden is bad for the country. Trump was good. New polling revealed that Americans view Trump's years as president as good for the nation, while Biden's years have been bad. This is why I think that that last poll where it had Trump up 0.2% over Biden is criminally low because this is the failing New York Times, mind you. The New York Times Siena College poll found that 25% of Americans say that Biden has been mostly good for America while 42% said the same for Trump. That is a huge difference. Of those who said either president was mostly bad, 33% said this of Trump, while 46% said that of Biden. More people think Biden was bad. More people think Trump was good. Isn't that weird how that always seems to work out? Thank you, Jake Tapper. <laughs> the poll also found that poll respondents' views on Trump have changed since 2020, which was his last full year as president, 10 percent more people approve of his handling of the economy, pushing his approval on the topic over 60 percent. It's really easy to look at a guy and go, you know what? He was actually doing a pretty good job when, you know, the walls are crumbling down around you. When everything is falling apart, it, it's it's a lot easier to be like, eh, all right, he did a pretty good job. All right, let's go back. Let's go back. Yeah. 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 I for, please forgive me for what do I said over, earlier. Do over. Yeah, let's do this again. <laughs> Trump Trump also gained nine points among those who think Trump left the country in a better state. So in 2020 to now, he gained nine points of people saying, yeah, Trump left the country in, in a better shape than it is now. I think a lot of people can feel that. And it takes three disastrous years of Joe Biden to honestly feel it. And you feel it in your pocketbook every single day i felt it at the pump this morning oh my gosh are they going to do anything about gas prices i mean that we know they're not going to fill up the strategic petroleum reserves but kareem jean pierre was asked about this in a press conference yesterday are, are, are you guys going to do you know anything about gas prices? That's about gas prices. Um, they've been going up over the last month, 20 cents a gallon. Um, is the president considering any new actions like releasing more oil from the strategic petroleum reserve? He said, is, he, is the president thinking about doing anything else like releasing more from the strategic petroleum reserve, which is at record lows because he emptied it already and he's not refilling it? No such thing as dumb questions, right? Is that what we're supposed to say? So I don't have I don't have any new actions to read out. I will say I will note that gas prices remain uh, well below their peak back in 2022. I think that's important. And the uh, the average gas price right now is cheaper than this time uh, last year. And that's because of what this president has been doing over the last three years, including the SPR. Oh, it's, I'll say. Listen, I'll just say, says Kareem Jump here. They could be worse. Things could always be worse. Isn't that like a vote of confidence from, uh, you know, doesn't that make you feel, oh, all right. 
We haven't even reached our floor yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, let me remind you, uh, with this president, this administration, things have been worse. <laughs> She's like, in 2022, it was way worse, guys. Way, Remember? way worse. <laughs> way worse. Cheap Gas Mean Tweets 2024. It's 921 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN.
Got a crash and uh, the right shoulders blocked. 40 westbound right before Spence Lane. And then 65 northbound, southbound off-ramp to southbound 65, the south loop. The off-ramp right lane blocked there. There is a bill advancing in the state house that requires schools to let parents know about what their kids say about gender identity at school. These stories and more at 10 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Oh, Actually, I'm, 930. All right. I'm with it. Either way. 930 or 10. <laughs> we'll be here. Whatever you want to do, Ken. <laughs> I love it. Uh, we, <laughs> we can throw curveballs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have an update on yesterday's show. Uh, we were talking about what happened in Sydney, Australia. And the uh, Bishop Mari, Mar, Mar Mari Emanuel, uh, who is very popular on social media, he was attacked while preaching. Uh, the Sydney police have officially declared that a terrorist attack, which is something that I, I was leaning towards believing in, in the beginning anyway, uh, because, you know, he, the, this bishop is very outspoken when it comes to Islam, but not in a way where it's hateful or ignorant or mean. He's just like, listen, the only way to heaven is to come through uh, the father, right? You, you go, you have to accept Jesus and you that's how you get into heaven. So I, I already knew and then when you saw the video of the attack, uh, you know, it, it looks like radical jihadist coming in and he's upset. But Sydney police have now confirmed that that was, in fact, a terrorist attack. Police were called to a church in Wakeley in southwest Sydney in relation to reports that a male was stabbing the clergy inside that building. Police responded and arrested a young person and he was restrained inside that building. Subsequently, as it has been mentioned, at 1.35 a.m. this morning, after consideration of all the material, I declared that it was a terrorist incident. I was stabbing, yeah. and I saw him, I ran and grabbed him from behind and just pushed him down, look. All the tail is blocked. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Mother he kept saying, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. He was saying that? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. In the video that was posted on social media, the, the portion where the man was saying Allah Akbar uh, was not in the video. So people weren't sure if that was the motivation. But as city police have declared, it was a terrorist incident. And uh, listen, if you're if you're looking at this stuff critically, you could probably have made that assumption uh, much earlier than the Sydney police, but at least they didn't sweep this out of the rug. They're calling it what it is. I did hear that the attacker's knife did not open. Which is, no, seriously, like the, the knife didn't open, which is just a blessing. So uh, he wasn't stabbed, um, which would have just been Oh, I know what you mean. Yes, horrific. yes, yes. So he went to open right. the blade. The blade gotcha. didn't open. But, I mean, he got the guy like... Oof. He got the bishop about eight times, I counted, and it was in his face, neck, and head. I mean, if the if the blade had been open, I don't know if the bishop would have survived. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the, the bishop released a statement saying, pray for the attacker, and, uh, you know, which is just amazing in and of itself uh, to take that kind of a stand. But uh, as more updates become available, we'll have them for you here on Super Talk. Nine thirty on the dot. I'm Ken Weaver with your top stories, tracking the potential for strong to severe storms. We'll tell you about it in the full forecast in two minutes. And a bill is a few votes away from Governor Lee's desk, which would require school districts to notify parents if their kids ask for action to affirm their gender identity, such as using a different name or pronoun. The bill goes back for another vote in the Senate, which had already passed a version of it before it can go to Governor Lee. An 81-year-old Ohio man now facing murder charges after police say it looks like both he and the victim were caught up in a scam. William Brock says he had been called by someone threatening his family and demanding money. The caller then said someone would arrive to collect. Investigators believe the same scammers went through Uber to arrange a pickup, and that's when the victim, 61-year-old Lalitha Hall, was sent to Brock's home. Brock, believing Hall was part of the scam, threatened her with a gun and told 911 he shot her. As you can hear, courtesy of Broadcastify.com. I saw her in the leg first time, and I saw her in the shoulder. That again on Broadcastify.com, and she later died of her injuries. 
That's the latest news. Weather is next. I'm Ken Weaver, WTN News. The guaranteed offer is the easiest way to sell your home. It's really simple. We bring you an all-cash offer. You close in as little as 21 days. No home inspections, no lockboxes, no open houses. Go to MarkSpain.com to get a guaranteed offer and start packing. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Matt Murphy for Members Nutrition. I want to tell you about the Members Nutrition difference, and I want to encourage you to go over to the Members Nutrition website. Number one, they believe at Members Nutrition that they can sell vitamins and supplements at a lower cost point, and they're doing it every single day at membersnutrition.com. Number two, they want to make these products right here in the United States of America, not from some overseas company, and they do that every single day. I encourage you to go to membersnutrition.com. You'll get 50% off your purchase price at checkout. You don't have to put in any codes. Just go to membersnutrition.com. Once again, membersnutrition.com. What an absolute mess. Hey, it's Dan Manderson. Look at my closets. Unorganized to say the least. Even my window dormer is a train wreck. Stuff is everywhere. Now, luckily, California Closets is coming to my rescue. My personal design consultant, Vince, stopped by, measured, and is now showing me how to become more space efficient and organized on his 3D CAD system. It is amazing. And soon, my space is going to be organized. And yes, even Bandit approves. California Closets, a local company that can customize the storage in any room of your house. California Closets, what can they do for you? Find them online at CaliforniaClosets.com and reach out for your free in-home consultation. Population's animals. I mean, think about the white-tailed deer and, and how when Ed started and maybe even before Ed a little bit, they started, you know, working to bring these populations back. And now we have these sustainable populations that we can hunt. Yeah. You know, the story of the eastern wild turkey and what's happening with turkeys. So I would consider all these things great successes. Um, the conservation efforts that have been worked on by the personnel for years. I would think that it's a great success story for our state. You're going to see some footage from an old film that was produced here in, at the agency in the Game of Fish days, and which shows some things like, you know, the wife taking care of the animal that that the officer, the husband, had to bring home to take care of, you know, because they got a call, and uh, times have changed. Now we have the rehabilitators that help out with that kind of thing. And Thank goodness. We got to be really good friends with some of those little animals. And <laughs> my first commission in 1972. Okay, yeah. At that time, it was a little different, you know, the whole law enforcement world was different then. Yep. So anyway, we got the first commission in, in 1972 and, and worked all over the state. It was really great to be able to do that. Pretty much, it, you had one uniform. And I noticed in the, in the movie, too, everybody wearing ties. You know, for years and years, you had to, if you wore a long sleeve shirt, you had to wear a tie. It didn't matter if you were doing enforcement or sanding a pond or whatever you were doing, you had that tie on. Oh, wow. wow. And then everybody looked forward. There was one date, and it kind of moved. But generally around April the 1st, you switched from long sleeves to short sleeves, and you didn't have to wear a tie. And everybody's going, come on, April 1st. <laughs> <laughs>
937 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. I got a text here on the Members Nutrition text line talking about the uh, Bishop Mar Mari Emanuel who was stabbed in Australia. 0857 says, is it true that the perpetrator was only 15 years old? Uh, the, the perpetrator was actually 16 years old. 16. I don't know. Does that make a difference? Same thing, right? Uh, as we talked about, the incident was captured on the live stream for the church. And, I mean, the people in that community were irate. They, they were outside the church chanting, uh, bring him out, throwing rocks and bottles. So, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. ABC News reports that the boy was charged with a range of offenses, including possessing a knife. And that was, uh, he was also involved uh, in an incident last year at a Sydney train station. So he was found in possession with a flick knife and charged with being armed with a weapon with intent to commit an indictable offense, indictable offense, uh, stalking and or intimidation, recklessly destroy or damage property. This is what the kid was doing before that. Um, and then he was out on bail. And then he attacked uh, the, the bishop in Sydney. 16 years old. 16. That is what radical ideology can do to a young person. Absolute radical ideology. Uh, and and we, we've, seen, we've seen what radical ideology uh, can do. Uh, we, we know, thanks to Steven Crowder, uh, the, the Nashville shooter was radical, transgender, and hated white people. Uh, Steven Crowder is now on the ground in Nashville today. Uh, they're covering the trial, which will determine whether or not the full Nashville manifesto is released to the public. And uh, they, they have audio on their Twitter stream. It's trial day here in Nashville. Just after the one-year anniversary of the tragic events at the Covenant School, parties will gather here to determine the fate of the Nashville manifesto. In a few short hours, the trial will begin in front of Judge Miles' courtroom to decide whether or not the public will finally get to see the manifesto in its entirety or whether it will remain outside of public view. I will be inside the courtroom taking notes, reading the witnesses, reading the judge, and reporting back what I find so that we can finally see what will happen with this manifesto. Stay Do you think it's going to get released? 615-737-9986 if you want to text into the member's nutrition text line or call. I, I feel like we could go either way on this. I, I feel like this is, we're looking at a 50-50 shot here. 50-50. Yeah, I agree. Is that fair? Yeah, I think that's fair. This could go either way. Enough has been released already that we kind of already got the gist of it, right? And we're, we're going to hear arguments over whether or not the whole thing should be released. Daily Wire has a story up about this. Uh, the, the court proceedings are overseen by Judge Aisha L. Miles, She's going to decide whether a trove of documents belonging to the shooter who took the lives of three children, three staff members at Covenant on March 27th will be made available to the public. Uh, included is not only the shooter's manifesto, uh, manifesto, but also 14 different home videos, 20 journals, a suicide mm -hmm. note, and a psych folder with medical information about the shooter. There's also three folders with information on the school shootings and firearm courses, as well as a memoir and notes written by the shooter. This will absolutely give us like a bird's eye view into the mind of the shooter and what really happened here. I want all of this released and I want to know, was this radical ideology influencing her as much as those three pages that were leaked lead us to believe? The hearing is going to hinge, according to the Daily Wire and their report, on the Tennessee Public Records Act, which controls what documents should be classified as public records, as well as which ones should not. Five different parties are part of the suit. Tennessee Firearms Association, the Tennessee and the Tennessee Star, Republican State Legislator Todd Gardenhire, and the National Police Association. On the other side, uh, there's a group of families from the Covenant School that filed a motion to block the release of the documents, arguing that their release could further traumatize those who were personally affected by the shooting. At a year in, at a year in, I understand that the shooting is traumatic. I understand that these kids were traumatized. 
can more damage be done by releasing information? I don't think so. And I think we're doing a disservice to the public by not getting all the information out there. That's just me personally. And as a dad with kids, as a dad with kids, with young kids who go to school every day, this is this is something that we think about, right? It's not like a fear that's always present, like omnipresent, like this could happen. But I would like to think that in that situation, I would want every bit of information possible. Now, again, I'm on the outside looking in. I can't really read these parents' minds and what they're feeling, what they're going through. But me personally, if it was my kid's school, I would want every single piece of information, period. Because we can't really come to any determination until we have every single piece of information. Uh, we're just, we're all kind of just guessing. And, and we're, we're, we're looking at three pages and not really getting a whole picture. But the picture that those three pages paint is... Well, yeah, and I think that medical information you mentioned... That could adhere a lot of answers that to a lot of our questions. What I mean, kind of medication was this person on? Yeah, because we're we're at the beginning of of all of this sort of of stuff with you know testosterone and what how that affects your body and how it affects your mental state and 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 knowing what that person was on would would maybe help you know our researches into all of that. Um, and you you bring up the question, Chris. You know, could this hurt? Uh, cause more damage to these families and to these kids. You know, I, 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 it depends on the information. I would say I would probably lean your way and say no, but I will say devil's advocate. They will have to relive it all again. But will the kids have to relive it all again, or will the parents have? The to kids relive are going to have to relive it again in in years. They they won't have to do that now. The kids are going to live with this their whole lives. Those those parents will have to relive it again. One hundred percent. And, and no, I, the kids, it's done. I mean, that's their life. It's yeah, terrible. It's it's already there. Yeah, it's terrible. I don't think more information is going to yeah. hurt the kids anymore. I, I, no, I, just, I yeah, I can see. Yeah, I agree. You know, I don't know. It, it's hard to um, fault the parents without being completely in their shoes and understanding their thinking and their mind state and all you know all the variables that come into that. So I don't want to go. I, I don't. I'm not trying to go on the air and be like those parents are wrong for not wanting this no. released. Uh, and I, I, that's not that's not what I'm trying to say. I just think that if I was in their shoes, I would want all the information. I think that that's fair. And at the end of the day, sadly, it's it's kind of, in my opinion, a little bit irrelevant what they want in this situation. We need to worry about the greater good and, and preventing this from happening again. And, and the, the fact of the matter is, a lot of that information could potentially help us in preventing a, a, a tragedy like this from happening again. Yeah. yeah. If, if there's that, if, if that potential is even 1%, let's do it. Doesn't the left always say if it saves one life, right? Where, if it saves Bingo. one life. Bingo. Yep. Uh, another big Nashville case that has been uh, making massive news is Riley Strain. Have you heard the latest um, from Riley Strain's family speaking out? Apparently, Riley Strain's mom, and if you're unfamiliar with the case, Riley Strain went uh, missing after a night of drinking. They, a TikToker found his debit card along the banks of the, the Cumberland River. Was the, the body was found, correct? Yep. Body was found. No pants. No pants. Uh, no wallet. Yep. Right? But the cell phone was there? I believe so. The shirt was on. Yep. Shirt was on. So there's a lot of strange stuff happening yep. in the Riley Strains case. And and now uh, Riley Strains family is speaking out. They did an interview uh, with News Nation, and it's going to be airing uh, tonight at 10 Eastern. But there are clips starting to leak out from that interview. And they Riley Strains mom says that she got a text from Riley uh, before the disappearance. He had sent me a text and said um, that he had or ordered a, he was drinking a rum and coke and it didn't taste good. And I said, well, you probably shouldn't drink it then. He goes, well, it tastes like barbecue. And I go, well, that sounds awful. And he said, um, well, it sounds good, but it's not. When a rum and coke normally tastes the same, I mean, that's not something that you really normally taste any different. Right. It has a very consistent taste. Yes. Yes. And that's why I'm like, you probably shouldn't drink that then. Do you think that could have something to, to do with what happened? Um, yeah. Maybe there was something in it that shouldn't have been. Maybe there was something in his drink that shouldn't have been. 
it's very interesting. And it makes me want to get a toxicology report and, and be able to get my eyes on that. Because was this gentleman drugged? Yep. Right? There, there's so many question marks on that case. So many. And, you know, I, I don't want to, like, badmouth his buddies. But, like, where are your boys? You know what I mean? He was with a whole crew of guys, right? Yeah. W where are your boys? No, I get that. I get it. I've had this conversation with a lot of my friends, too. I, I Yeah, I get what you're saying. I, I, It's hard for me to blame them. They're young, too, and they're also intoxicated. And That's fair. They did call him, and he said he was on his way home. Now, that he shouldn't trust their intoxicated friend in a new city that he's never been in and say, all right, man, have fun. See you later. Like, call him up an Uber, you know, please, and make sure he gets in the car. I get it. I totally get you, but it's just, it's hard. They're kids, too. So I'm I'm looking forward to this. This interview is going to air on News Nation tonight at 10 Eastern. So what's that? Nine Central. Nine. Um, so it's it's with Riley's his his family speaking out. His mom is there. His dad is there. Uh, they've been very vocal throughout this whole process. It, it it doesn't seem like it's going to give us any answers. It's just going to give us more questions. Yeah, yeah. And and does a drink tasting like barbecue is that a telltale sign of a drink being roofied or something of that nature or is it just a, a random text that doesn't really mean anything he had sent me a text and said um that he had or ordered a he was drinking a rum and coke and it didn't taste good and i said well you probably shouldn't drink it then he goes well it tastes like barbecue and i go well that sounds awful and he said um well it sounds good but it's not when a rum and coke normally tastes the same, I mean, that's not something that you really normally taste any different. Right. And has a very consistent taste. Yes. Yes. I mean, does... I, I've always been under the impression that the, these drugs that people put in drinks are, are odorless and tasteless, right? Yeah, I thought that was kind of the point. So I don't know if this is a sign or just a random text that maybe we're reading too much into. Yeah. But it definitely brings up more questions. Absolutely. Uh, members Nutrition Super Text Line uh, 0610, first time texter. Uh, why is that just now coming out? Wouldn't that have been crucial to say in the beginning? Wouldn't they have automatically run a toxicology screening in the second autopsy that the parents had run, if not even the first one? Does Will those drugs come up in a toxicology report? I'm sure they would. I would assume. Uh, 0633 said maybe it was spiced rum. Maybe. Maybe. That's what I'm saying. Like, is this significant or is it just a random text? It just seems odd that that's what they're bringing up in a News Nation interview. Mm. No, I, yeah. Are they leaning into he was probably drugged, but they're not 100% sure, so they don't want to come out and say it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're obviously unhappy with the results so far of this investigation. Yeah. Well, and it's hard to fault them for that. Yeah. I get that. It, it is absolutely hard to fault them for that. It's 951 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Hey, it's Chris Hand for my friends at the Glock Store. You've heard uh, all of us talking about the Glock Store. They have some great events. Um, and Matt and Dan have been talking about the uh, annual open house that they have coming up, uh, which is always incredible. It, that's coming up fast. Saturday, June 1st. For the Glock store open house. Make sure you save that date. I'm going to be there. Matt's going to be there. Dan's going to be there. But did you know that the Glock store is actually hosting all kinds of events? They do this a lot. Birthday parties, retirement celebrations, bachelor and bachelorette parties, team building exercises, and fundraising events of all kinds. I want to do my birthday party at the Glock store. Can we make that happen? I want to, that, that's what I want to do. Uh, my, my, uh, 25th birthday party is going to be at the Glock store. But uh, they do they do these events all the time. For example, Davidson County Republican Party, they're holding their annual Shooting Star fundraiser this Saturday, April 20th at the Glock store. And you can actually go to that. It's not too late to join in the fun of the Davidson County Republican Party's annual Shooting Stars fundraiser. They're going to have meet and greets with local politicos, shooting competitions, great prizes, and your entry ticket gets you a chance to win a Glock 43X 
that night. You could walk out with a brand new Glock. Go to GOPNashville.com and click on Shooting Stars to get your tickets for that event. And if you're thinking about hosting your own event, you should do it at the Glock store, and you can do it by calling them today at 615-682-6565. Tell the person who answers, I want to throw a party, and they'll make it happen at a price you can afford. That's 615-682-6565. The Glock store is ready for your next event. They're minutes from the airport and worth the drive from anywhere.
Gender identity legislation update in Tennessee. And you got to hear about this deadly scam in Ohio. The killer is a victim, too. These stories and more at 10 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Thank you, Ken Weaver. It is Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. You can find me on Twitter, True Social, Instagram, at Chris Hand on air. You can listen to us wherever you go with the iHeartRadio app, the TuneIn app. You can find the podcasts of the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and you can watch us. Super Talk TV is on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. Did I get everything? I think I got everything. That's it? On the members' nutrition text line, we're, we're getting quite a bit of reaction um, from what what would be or could be in a toxicology report. 0448 texted in and said, uh, first time texter, said, highly unlikely anything comes back on toxicology. 14 days in water. I've seen no results back on five days after deceased, not in water. Man. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Then we had another first time texter. What number was that? 7666, I believe. 7666. Do you have it in front of you? Yeah, good morning, guys. This wasn't a first-time text, so maybe we're talking about different ones. I think it's the same one, though, Chris. Uh, yeah. I work with a lot of DUI and drug cases. One of the most frustrating things representing those clients is that if they were roofied or given any kind of date rate, it actually disappears from the system, usually within about eight hours, and is undetectable. So in that scenario, the toxicology report... Wouldn't help at all. Yeah, sounds like there's little to zero chance of that providing any information. Maybe that's why the parents are saying this on the News Nation thing without saying it. Yep. They're leaning into it. Maybe this was what happened. But if you can't prove it, it's just a theory, right? Crazy. I I, I hope they find out what happened to Riley Strain. It's 10 o'clock on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Ten o'clock on the dot. I'm Ken Weaver with your top stories. Looking ahead, maybe some strong to severe storms this week. Full forecast in two minutes. Checking on some legislation advancing at the state capitol. If a student at school asks for action affirming his or her gender identity, the school district would be required to notify the parents under a bill getting closer to Governor Lee's desk. This bill also allows the state attorney general and parents to sue if they think the school district isn't following the law. Now, it's not law yet, but this bill has passed the House and must go back to the Senate before getting to the governor. Former President Trump back in the New York City courtroom where a jury is being seated for the hush money criminal trial. And before going in, Trump called it a sham. We have a Trump-hating judge. We have a judge who shouldn't be on this case. He's totally conflicted. But this is a trial that should never happen. Yesterday, prosecutors accused Trump of violating a partial gag order and said they would seek a $1,000 fine. The judge also ruled Trump has to be present in court for the duration of the trial, which will likely last weeks. An Uber driver is dead and an elderly Ohio man is charged with her murder. The two, who did not know each other before their encounter, were brought together as part of a scam that neither knew was happening. Police saying 81-year-old William Brock shot 61-year-old Lolita Hall after Hall was asked through the Uber app to pick up a package at Brock's home, unaware Brock had been getting threatening calls from the same scammers that ordered the Uber ride. Police saying the scam involved one or multiple suspects claiming that one of Brock's relatives was in jail and needed money. Here's Rihanna Nally. Once Hall arrived to pick up the package, presumably the money being demanded, Brock is seen holding her at gunpoint, demanding to know who had called him. A scuffle followed. Police say Brock shot her three times and did not call 911 until after the shooting. Did you shoot her? Yes, I did. Okay. She's laying in the driveway? Yeah. Brock saying he thought Hall was working with the man who had threatened him over the phone. That is the latest news. Weather is next. I'm Ken Weaver, WTN News.
10.05 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. Uh, can you get um, him the number? He says the number he has doesn't work anymore. A, a Nashville criminal attorney was going to call in and kind of give us uh, his take on the what a toxicology report entails and, and what that looks like uh, by the name of Adam Dredd. He hit us up on the member's nutrition text line. Um, he doesn't have the number. Is that him on the main file? Uh, on the main line? Okay, that's him. All right, perfect. Put him on hold so I can get him on the air. Mac Mac does this. He like exchanges pleasantries. Don't exchange ple- like I got. I want to get the guy on the air. Uh, Adam, you're on Super Talk. What's up, man? Well, hey, Chris. How are you, man? I'm good. Thanks. Um, thanks for calling way, in. I lo- yeah, I love your show. Oh, and, thank you. Uh, but uh, this is a subject kind of near and dear to my heart. I, I've been practicing DUI law for about 20 years in Nashville, and uh, it is so sad when someone is roofied and gets in an accident or, or hurt, and uh, they're not. They, they've had. They do have alcohol in their system, but unfortunately. The real cause of the injury is the rohypnol, and there's almost no way to prove it unless they literally draw their blood within a couple hours. Really? So in, in, in this case with a toxicology report and a second toxicology report, there would be no way that that would even come up? In, in my experience, I would say slim to none. Do you think, that the, go- do you think that the family believes that that's what happened to him, the way they kind of explain that in the News Nation clip I played? You know, I, I think they're looking for anything right now, and I, I really can't blame them. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it is tragic. I mean, my theory is he just fell in the river, honestly, just stumbling around. But, I mean, that's, parents don't want to hear that. Well, but in that theory, it, it does kind of raise even more questions like, well, how was his debit card found on the bank of the river? How did he lose his pants? Uh, I, you know, the, there it, it almost raises more questions, right? It does, but, you know, in all seriousness, he might have decided he needed to use the restroom and decided to go in the river and fell in while he's doing that. Uh, I've seen that happen before, too, unfortunately, in some cases. I, I uh, can... Not in Nashville, but out of state. So, I mean, there's so many things that could have happened, and I feel so bad for the parents. But bottom line is the toxicology report is not going to show any date rape or roofy kind of drugs in his system at this point in time. It's just too too far gone. Way too far gone. Hey, I appreciate the expertise. Um, speaking of court cases, what do you think is going to happen today in the Nashville Manifesto case? I have no idea, what honestly. Do you, what do you think the odds are of it all being released, all the information? Uh, you know, again, and again, because I don't have access to the police, but there still is a possibility of it being an ongoing investigation because it, somebody could have put these crazy ideas and thoughts into her head. There could be a co-conspirator they're still trying to find. Fair enough. Hey, I, I yeah. appreciate you calling in, Adam. Thanks so much, man. You got it. Have a great day. Hey, Bye-bye. you too. All right, that's uh, Adam Dredd. Uh, did you just almost fall? I just, like, look up, and Mac almost fell in his chair. You know, you'd think that they would just give a producer one chair, one good desk chair. I've been advocating for stools. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, who needs the back? No. Yeah. Did you be able to spring up? Who needs an armrest that actually holds up and doesn't break when you sit in it? Yeah. You okay. literally you literally almost ate it. Yeah, I did. It took my whole train of thought away. <laughs> uh, also, I want to point out anecdotally, we are the number one show for criminal defense attorneys. Bingo. So far and away. Far and away. Are you kidding me? Nobody even comes close. Uh, 7627 says, how could Riley Strain lose his pants, belt, and boots in the current, but not his boxers? Doesn't make sense. I'd be checking to see who might be wearing those garments at the homeless encampments in the mission. This doesn't add up, and it shouldn't have happened. I, well, I agree it doesn't add up. I agree it shouldn't have happened. But I guess if, if you're there at the edge of the river and you've already dropped the pants, right? I don't know. I, I have no idea. It, it is an interesting case. I hope that they figure out what happened. Although the way it looks, it seems like the the best we're going to get out of this is question marks. Yeah. it's it That seems like that's going to be the outcome. Yeah, it's going to be hard to get any sort of answers on this. I am looking forward to the uh, interview with Riley Strain's family on News Nation tonight at 9 Central. Uh, that is going to be interesting. Um, 
3869 said, I thought it was stated that he didn't drown. Was that, did that happen, Mac? Mac covers all these these news stories in depth when he does the news in the afternoon. I don't recall that. Yeah, I don't either. I can confirm that here, though. Yeah, confirm that for me. Uh, Sally on the members' nutrition text line says, I agree with Adam. The parents will believe whatever makes them feel better. No parent wants to believe their kids are just stupid. Ugh. Yeah. I mean, if he wa- if there was some kind of roofie, though, in his, in his system and that led to that, it's like, that's heartbreaking. Uh, the, the whole the whole situation is heartbreaking. Nobody wants to lose a son that way. Um, all right, switching gears. It is Super Talk ninety nine seven WTN. Did you find that before I switch accidental gears? Accidental drowning is really the the verbiage that's being used. Accidental drowning. Yeah. Accidental. Yeah. All right. Meaning not criminal. Yeah. No criminal. Yeah. It's a crazy story. Uh, all right, switching gears, 615-737-9986 if you want to weigh in on a topic. Did you hear Corrine Jean-Pierre yesterday? Um, she opened up with the cringiest of tax jokes ever. Uh, she Ugh. she made up for uh, what she, she just proved why Mandis calls her cringe Jean-Pierre. Uh, listen, listen to this joke. Uh, this is on tax day. <laughs> Happy tax day. I did take care of my taxes. I don't I don't have a wife to take care of my taxes. <laughs> Is that a sexist joke? Yeah, I don't know. That was weird. I don't know how that works. Why did she, why did she I don't do know. That? I don't know how that works in that arena, if you will. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Is that de- is that demeaning towards women <laughs> when a lesbian does it? Do you know what I mean? Is is she embracing the patriarchy when she when she says that? I don't. I don't have a wife to take care of my taxes. Ouch! <laughs> <laughs> One of the reporters. Ouch! Yeah. Well, I think it was his, his ears after that laugh. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that sexist when uh, when she does it? She's always the only one laughing after the joke. Uh, there was there was a couple some pity like, laughs in there. There was some pity laughs. Okay, good, good for her. There was some good pity for her. laughs. Hope that made her feel good. Yeah, they asked her if she uh, had a comment on Trump's trial as well. You have a former president going on criminal trial for the first time in history. Trial of the century. So, what is the White House's reaction to that? I, I do want to be super mindful. Even me commenting on that, and it is an ongoing uh, case. I just want to be super, super mindful and not comment on an ongoing case, even if it's asking an opinion about the, the, you know, the historic nature of what's happening and what's going to occur in the next couple of weeks. So do want to be mindful. And he happens to be, as you just said, a, a candidate. If you ask Corrine Jean-Pierre a question, uh, don't expect an answer. Expect a word salad. I'm seeing uh, Murphy leave CNN on in here. More jurors have been dismissed. This is, I wonder what is the longest amount of time it's taken to select jurors for a trial because I have a feeling we're going to break the record. Is there a record for the longest amount of time it's taken to select jurors? Fact checking. Can you find that? Do you think they keep that logged somewhere? Because I I have a feeling we're going to blow this out of the water. It's going to take them uh, very, very long to find. jurors Uh, she was also talking about uh, joe's busy day yesterday you know joe biden had a busy day uh joe biden had two meetings yesterday two joe had two meetings it was uh incredible and uh she was she was asked about uh joe's busy day and uh you know she's like he'll get updated on israel at some point he's got a He's got a very busy day. Oh, well, as you know, the president is pretty busy today. He has two bilats, uh, as you know, with the, as you just saw with the Iraqi prime minister and one with the Czech Republic. So it's a busy day focusing on, uh, obviously, uh, our national security priorities and continuing these strong alliances that we have uh, with these two leaders, obviously two separate meetings, and continuing to, um, you know, continue to deliver for the American people. I. Uh. I'm sure he'll he'll you know get an update at some point today. But his focus right now are the meetings that he have he has and what he continues to do every day. Well, and they got to get him juiced up for two meetings. You know, that's not easy. It's not easy at that age. In the meetings, though, uh, he, he had he had some sit downs, and he's he's there with the prime minister of the Czech Republic, and he 
butchers the name of the country. And together, we're standing, and I can't tell how much we appreciate your outspokenness and the support of the people of Czechoslovakia and the Czech Republic with uh, uh, defending the people of Ukraine. Did you hear that right there? Support of the people of Czechoslovakia and the Czech Republic. The people of Czechoslovakia, uh, the Czech Republic. So, if, if and listen, I don't, I don't expect the average person to, to, like, catch that. You know, Eastern European countries, like, meh. You know, you know, meh. But he calls the Czech Republic Czechoslovakia. It has not been Czechoslovakia since 1992. Uh, that's when they split into two countries: the Czech Republic and Slovakia. So, like, I'm not. I wouldn't like. I wouldn't nail the average person on not knowing that. But like, you're the president of the United States, and you're next to the guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you, you've been, you got your notes. We know he's got his notes in front of him. He reads from the notes, and he's still supported the people of Czechoslovakia, the Czech Republic, with. Uh, uh... Like, did you hear him? Did you hear him? Like, we we can't give him an update. We're gonna confuse the poor guy. And his his meeting with the Iraqi prime minister didn't didn't go well either. Uh, well, his statement his statement he gave a statement on Israel, Iran, and it sounds pretty good. But he's he's reading from pre written notes. As you know, Iran launched an unprecedented aerial attack against Israel, and we mounted an unprecedented military effort to defend Israel. Together with our partners, we defeated that attack. كما تعلمون شنت إيران هجوما جويا غير مسبوق ضد إسرائيل وقمنا نحن من طرفنا بجهد عسكري دفاعا عن إسرائيل وبالتعاون مع شركائنا قمنا بدحر هذا الهجوم. The United States is committed to Israel's security. والولايات المتحدة ملتزمة بأمن إسرائيل. We're committed to a ceasefire that will bring the hostages home and preventing conflict from spreading beyond what it already has. Listen, you know, he slurs a little bit. He gets through the statement. But the amazing thing is uh, there there are close-ups of the cheat sheet that Biden had during his meeting with the Iraqi prime minister. And you, you can kind of see his script. But in big, big letters with an exclamation point, it says, pause. Pause, Joe. Pause. We're, we're not a serious country. The president of the United States, in his notes, like, I'm not even knocking him for having notes. Like, it's a hard job. But in your notes, it has to say pause. Pause. I, I wish he said it out loud. I'm sure we can find audio where he has said that out loud. Pause. <laughs> Just, why? Why are we doing this to ourselves? And then uh, when the Iraqi prime minister starts speaking, uh, you know, he starts speaking in Joe while, while this is going on. Joe is fiddling with his watch the entire time. The entire time. You can find the video on Twitter. It is, uh, it's infuriating. Like, the notes say pause. The notes say pause. And then the, the other guy starts talking. He's like, hey, all right, let me see what's uh, let me see what I got going on. You need to get him like a fidget spinner or something. They should get him a fidget spinner. <laughs> he's like looking for the exit. Are we done? Is this, is this over? What is this guy talking about? <laughs> it's just, it's, uh. So, you know, he says his nice statement about Israel. That's great. That's great. Um, but one of the big questions is, uh, does the administration support standalone aid for Israel. Do, do you support that? Um, it, it's an interesting question, and the administration says no. Corrine Jean-Pierre had an even more interesting answer. She said uh, standalone aid doesn't help anybody. Oh, hold on one second. Get my audio up. This is Kareen's answer. House Speaker Mike Johnson has said that he'll move forward uh, with a vote on additional Israel aid. If Congress were to pass additional aid for Israel, if only that, will President Biden reject it? So we've been very clear, my colleagues from here just moments ago, that we uh, will not accept a standalone. 
uh, a standalone uh, would would actually not help Israel and Ukraine. It would actually delay the needs that they the the, the needs that the, the needed aid uh, that they obviously need uh, to fight. Uh, Standalone aid for Israel would not help Israel and Ukraine. Well, okay. Partially true because it would be standalone aid for Israel. And I also, I'm of the opinion that I don't want to give aid to anybody because uh, next year our interest payments on the country's debt is more than our military budget. So let's get that out of the way. Uh, we can't afford it. But just, just hear this woman's answer. Standalone aid doesn't help because... Uh, it wouldn't get Israel and Ukraine what they need. Huh. Well, we were only asking about Israel, not Ukraine, so... You see what was happening in Ukraine. Obviously, uh, the brave people of Ukraine are, are, are fighting against a tyrant. We need to make sure that they have this, the assistance that they need. We saw what happened in Israel just over uh, over the weekend and the leadership that this president has shown. It would, it would, actually, it would actually not help them if... Oh, okay. When she puts it like that, um, okay. It would actually not help them. All right. It reminds me of the line that Justin Trudeau said one time, like, well, if you, if you kill your enemies, they win. Oh, deep thoughts with KJP. It would actually not help them. All right. I'm glad we got that cleared up. It's 1022 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN.
gender identity in Tennessee schools legislation update. Also, Speaker Mike Johnson updating the status of Mayorkas impeachment proceedings. These stories are more at 1030 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Thank you, Ken Weaver. It is Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. We got a text uh, regarding uh, this this sexist comment from Corrine Jean Pierre. <laughs> Happy Tax Day! I did take care of my taxes. I don't I don't have a wife to take care of my taxes. <laughs> Ouch. Um. We can't we can't let her get away with that. <laughs> Well, we got a super text from the Statman 8548 on the Members Nutrition Super Text line that said, well, KJP and her partner broke up recently. Maybe it's a reference to that. Oh. Which I had no idea. And I looked it up, and that is true. It happened last year. Kareen Jean-Pierre reveals she ended a relationship with CNN anchor, what was her name? Suzanne Malvo? She was sleeping with somebody in the media? <laughs> What's this woman's name? Suzanne Malvo, long uh, C- CNN anchor. Suzanne Malvo. Um, yeah. Then now they're, and she says, a single mom who's now co-parenting. Who's a single mom? Karine Jean Pierre. She's a single mom. Published Thursday, she says she's now a single mom who's co-parenting. They have a not. Well, this is last year, so I guess a ten-year-old now. They had a kid together. Suppose so. And now she's a single mom. Are you, reading. If you're co-parenting, are you a single parent? I guess. Yeah, I guess. I have a lot of things running through my mind. Very interesting. Suzanne Malvo. Yeah, I don't know her. I've seen I'm seeing pictures of her. I don't know her. But I'm not really up to date with the CNN lineup, to be <laughs> honest. So. Oh, it's it's been ever changing. <laughs> yeah, keep, how would you be able to keep up? They keep firing people. <laughs> that's uh, that's interesting. So, I mean, I would have asked her to do my taxes anyway. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm like, yo, can you just, yo? I got the ten year old today. Okay? Help, help me this? out, <laughs> help me out real quick. Uh, CNN's not the only one that uh, fires people all the time. Did you hear that uh, the Charles Barkley Gail King show is canceled? I did. After six months. I know. This is crazy. I like Charles Barkley. I yeah. don't I don't think politically he's right on anything. Um, but I think he's hilarious. He's yeah, very I, entertaining. I think, I think he's hilarious. I'm gonna miss moments like these. Big sigh. First Big of all, sigh. I'm just gonna say this. If I see a black person walking around with Trump mugs, I'm gonna punch him in the face. <laughs> Charles. I know, Gil. 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 You really can't say that because a, you don't mean that. <laughs> oh, I mean that sincerely. I'm gonna just tell you something. And then you will be arrested for assault. And then what? I'm gonna bail then myself what? out and go celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> I believe him when he says. Oh yeah, I believe him wholeheartedly. I believe him. I mean, come on. I don't care what you think. That's I think, hilarious. I think that the the issue with the show was not Charles Barkley. No, no. I think the issue with the show was Gail King. Yeah, and I think they wanted to rein him in too much. Let Charles be Charles. Yeah, if you're going to have Charles on a show, he's going to say something like that. That's, this is what you signed up for. <laughs> yeah, this is it. He was going to be like, uh, he was Black Gutfeld. You know what I mean? Like, put him on late night. Exactly. And let him be, let him be Black Gutfeld. <laughs> if I see a black person walking around with Trump mugs, I'm going to punch him in the face. Charles. I know, Gil. Charles. Gil, 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 you, I, you really can't say that because, A, you don't mean that. You, oh, I mean that sincerely. <laughs> I'm going to just tell you something. And then you will be arrested for assault. And then what? I'm going to bail myself out and go celebrate. Ten thirty on the dot this Tuesday morning. I'm Ken Weaver with your top stories. Could have some off and on storms over the next couple of days. They could be strong to severe. We'll tell you about that risk during the full forecast in two minutes. And checking on legislation over at the state capitol, a bill is advancing that requires school districts to notify parents if their kids ask for action to affirm their gender identity, such as using a different name or pronoun. This also allows the state attorney general or parents to sue if they think the school district is violating the law. The bill could go to the governor after one more vote in the state senate. And right now in our nation's capital, here's Speaker Mike Johnson updating the House effort to boot Alejandro Mayorkas out 
as Homeland Security Secretary. After the House transmits the articles of impeachment to the Senate later today, we expect and we demand that all 100 senators listen to the arguments of the House impeachment managers. They have a constitutional and institutional obligation to do so. Republicans in the House say Mayorkas' handling of the illegal immigration crisis is putting Americans in danger. And that's the latest news. Weather is next. I'm Ken Weaver, WTN News.
1035 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. Find me on Twitter, True Social, Instagram at Chris Hand on Air. My producer, Mac J. Morey, 25 on Twitter. You can find him. Do you have a, a podcast coming out anytime soon? Yeah, we'll have one this week. It'll be uh, NBA playoffs. NBA playoffs. We'll preview. When do those start? Playing starts tonight and tomorrow. The real, I believe it's Saturday, we'll have their first seven game series. Who's doing the play in tonight? We got the West tonight, I think. So it's uh, the Lakers and the Warriors play the Kings. The Lakers play the Pelicans. All right. Those will actually be some good games. Yeah, I know. It's actually be some Those really are good actually games. Actually, some yeah. good games. Uh, Lisa in Bradyville, you're next on Super Talk. What's up, Lisa? Hi. Um, my I had a sexist comment for KJP, and I I hope she makes better sandwiches than she makes up stories. Um, oh, first of all, oh and, my gosh, you're ruthless, Lisa. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, and the other, I had a question about Riley Strain. I've been kind of out of the loop. Um, were they thinking that he was roofied because they found physical damage to like his anal area or I don't know if I can say that on here. Um, because if he was roofied and that drunk, the front part of his anatomy is certainly not going to be working. Um, so where, where did they get that idea? Was it just the clothing? So the, uh, I don't there? think it was any, uh, anatomy driven analysis. Um, okay. Okay. it was, okay. uh, the parents had a text message. Uh, it, they said they had a text message between him saying that his drink tasted funny. Okay. All right. Well, yep. he wouldn't have tasted Rohypnol anyway, right? No, exactly. Exactly. And, and that's kind of what yeah. we, what we came down to as well. Um, also to your sandwich comment, I would point out, uh, if, if she did make good sandwiches, maybe she wouldn't be single. Well, I sure wouldn't eat them. Anyway, thank you. Bye. Appreciate it, Lisa. Thank you. I like Lisa. Lisa's hilarious. Lisa. Uh... <laughs> oh, Lisa. All right. So uh, the House in Tennessee has passed legislation that would require Tennessee schools to disclose transgender status of students to parents. Tennessee House passed the bill that would make it a requirement for schools to inform parents if their child requests to be identified as transgender. I think this is a good thing. Uh, it's a step in the right direction. That's the least that these schools can do. Uh, I don't co-parent with the government, and I don't want the schools keeping secrets uh, from me when it comes to my children. So additionally, uh, this bill makes it uh, a, a requirement if it's a public charter school or public school to inform parents if their child requests gender affirming accommodations. It also prohibits the school from hiding information or providing false information regarding the student's gender identity or plan to transition to a gender that is different from the assigned sex at birth. I think this is a good step in the right direction. I'm sure that this is going to get passed uh, as it should because, yeah, parents should know. Parents should know. Uh, we just saw Idaho. Idaho had a big case, um, and, and this, the U.S. Supreme Court is upholding uh, their decision to ban child sex changes pending appeal. The court ruled six to three with the court's three liberal justices saying the law should have remained blocked in its entirety. Uh, so this was yesterday. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled that Idaho can enforce its ban on sex changes for minors pending appeal. According to NBC News, the court granted an emergency request filed by Idaho officials stating that the law enacted in 2023 could go into effect statewide, but could not be applied to the two plaintiffs that raised a challenge to it. So the court ruled 6-3 with the court's three liberal, liberal justices saying uh, the law should have been should should remain blocked in its entirety. Uh, in December, U.S. District Court Judge Lynn Windmill ruled that the state could not enforce the law as litigation continued, Idaho appealed to the Ninth, Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, which has not made a ruling. Windmill wrote in his ruling that the law prevented the use of generally accepted medical treatment for minors, such as puberty blockers and irreversible surgeries. This is a good law that Idaho is passing. Kids uh, should not be allowed to do this. It is something that will never, ever, ever be reversed. And these drugs that they're giving the kids, the puberty blockers, are effectively uh, castrating children. And, and listen, 
even on its face, if you think that this is a good thing, the puberty blockers, if, if they're given to a child at such a young age, it makes it so that way, uh, how do I put this? You need some more, uh, some more area to work with down there if you're going to get gender affirming care and a sexual reassignment surgery. So if you uh, if you give these puberty blocker drugs to a child who later wants to transition in life, uh, they they really can't because there's not enough down there for the surgeons to do what they want to do. And and oftentimes we've seen in study after study after study. These kids are growing out of this. Many kids grow out of wanting to transition. Dr. Phil, uh, who's quickly becoming one of the most red-pilled daytime TV hosts, had a show about this as well. And he had a transgender activist on, and the transgender activist said, kids who are two or three or four or five know who they are. Well, if children know who they are, which they do, and their parents seek out the information to help them be happy in their skin, who are you to block them from doing that? I think the important question was if children know who they are. Children do know who they are. At what age? At, at three, four, five. They know who they are when they're twisting <laughs> and twirling. They know who they are. No. No, they don't. Uh, as, as a dad who has a two, four, six, and ten-year-old, no. No, they do not. And I, I'm glad to hear the crowd audibly groan at the transgender activist who claims that children as young as three know who they are. Now, the, there's another person on this panel with Dr. Phil who shuts that take completely down. And, and he, he goes into the stats on the fact that we have detransitioners. And just, just, the, just the fact that there are detransitioners out there prove that kids don't know who they are at that young age. The idea that kids know who they are, um, I think the very existence of detransitioners shows that that's not true. Because these kids arrived at the clinic confident, 100% convinced that they knew who they were. Their parents were 100% convinced, apparently because they gave consent, um, that, that these treatments are, are correct. Um, and yet, these kids, uh, very shortly after they got double mastectomies or subjected their bodies to irreversible, often sterilizing treatments, and by the way, if you do the full course of medical transition, even just hormonal, um, it is guaranteed chemical castration for the rest of your life. And these kids went into that office knowing who they are, and yet very quickly after that regretted it. And uh, no less important, the doctors who saw them were convinced that these kids know who they are. And the doctors make a lot of money off these surgeries. And I know a detransitioner. She goes by the name Chloe Cole. And, and Chloe talks about how she goes into the doctor's office and, and she thinks that she's trans. And the doctors essentially convince her parents that she is. And, and the way they sell them on the surgeries and the medical intervention is, would you rather have a trans kid or a kid that commits suicide? You're, you're effectively... Uh, putting the parents between a rock and a hard place and, and guilting them into allowing this to happen. And then the kids grow up and they realize, what the hell did I do? And we're going to see this more and more and more as time goes on because we're seeing surgeries and, and puberty blockers and medical intervention in this area more and more and more. It's going to take some time until we realize the full effect of what has been done to a large group of kids in this world. And in Europe, they're stopping a lot of this stuff uh, right away, right now, because they realize these kids don't know what they need. They, they need help. We can all agree with that. But the help is not assisting them down this path of just gender mutilation. It's not that. So during this clip with Dr. Phil, uh, the, the transgender activist asks, well, how often do kids detransition? How often? But how often does that and, happen? Okay, so great question. Yes. Um, in order to have a good, reliable picture of the rates of detransition, we're going to have to wait at least another decade, probably two. That's, by the way, what clinicians in Europe are saying now, because uh, regret can take a long time to manifest. If you got your breast amputated at the age of 15, 
The full consequences of that may not be apparent to you until you're in your mid-30s and can't breastfeed. But current research does show, I mean, we have one research paper from 2021 that showed a 30% discontinuation rate of hormones. And, uh, you know, that rate is likely to go up and up and up because the protocol being used at these clinics is kids know who they are. There's no safeguarding. There's no second guessing of a kid's stated identity. And the fewer safeguards we have, the fewer, the less questioning that we do of these kids' uh, motives and, and mindset, the, the higher the rate of regret and detransition and medical harm is going to be. Yeah, and we need parents to protect their kids. So in Tennessee, you know, when they're passing this legislation saying, you know, a school teacher has to inform a parent if this kind of stuff is taking root. That's a good thing. There's a dad uh, in Texas who is basically in the court fight of his life currently. Uh, the mom lives in California. The dad lives in Texas. And this mother may be permitted by a California court to chemically castrate her son with puberty blockers without the father's permission and the belief that the child is transgender after moving with the son to California. This is a report from the Daily Express. Uh, Anne Georgilis is petitioning the courts to let her use puberty blockers on her 11-year-old son, despite opposition from Jeff Younger, the boy's father. The couple's divorced. The mother claims that the, boys, that the boy identifies as a girl. Uh, and in 2022, the Texas Supreme Court ruled against the father who is seeking to prevent the castration. Younger previously positioned the, petitioned the court to force the return of the couple's children whose mother had moved to California, but the court rejected this motion. A pro forma hearing is scheduled for April 25th, where transgender experts are slated to appear. But the boy's father uh, will reportedly not be allowed to testify against the procedure. The boy's father accused the Texas Supreme Court of terminating his parental rights. He said, my children are now subject to being chemically castrated in California. Texas is an empire of child abuse led by Texas judges. The, the boy's father goes on to say that he thinks the mother will take their son to a gender clinic in the Golden State if the California court rules to allow the procedure to benefit from SB 107, which Democrat Governor Newsom signed into law. That bill's primary author, Democratic State Senator Scott Weiner, claimed led the legislation created a refuge for trans kids and their families to protect trans kids and their families if they flee to California from Alabama, Texas, Idaho, or any other state, criminalizing the parents of trans kids for allowing them to receive gender-affirming care. Even the way they manipulate the language is so evil. It is not gender-affirming care. This is gender mutilation on children. You want to do that when you're an adult? Wait. Wait. But to do that on an impressionable young kid is insanity. The mother says, uh, my case is proof that the statutory design of the Texas family court is, no, the, sorry, the father said, my case is proof that the statutory design of the Texas family courts is abusive of the liberty of Texas citizens. The family courts are now clear and present danger to the welfare of Texas children. Judge Mary Brown of the 301st District Court stripped me of my parental rights without possibility of appeal just because I want to raise my son as a boy. Younger continued. He added, even the Supreme Court of Texas under Justice Blacklock allowed my son to be moved to California where he is at danger of chemical castration right now. There are no limits to the child abuse these courts will inflict on children. It's long past time for the Texas legislature to fix these lawless, child-abusing family courts. My message to the effeminate Texas legislature, fix the family courts or else. And, and I feel for this dad. What do you do in this situation where you know that your son is going to have something done to him that is irreversible? Chemical castration. What do you do? I fear that he's going to do something that it would would cause harm to someone. Because what father is going to sit by and, and watch this happen? I, I fear that we're going to see a case where we see this dad's mugshot on TV because he's kidnapped his son to save him from this procedure. And in that situation, 
it'd be hard to not understand where he's coming from. It's a crazy world out there. And it seems like we have all these experts saying, no, 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 chemically castrate your kids. And then on the flip side, we have experts saying, what are you doing? The stats say right now that the the rate of people stopping these puberty blockers is at 30%. And that those rates are going to get higher and higher and higher as we see time go on. It's 1051 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. The guaranteed offer is the easiest way to sell your home. It's really simple. We bring you an all-cash offer, you close in as little as 21 days, no home inspections, no lockboxes, no open houses. Go to MarkSpain.com to get a guaranteed offer and start packing.
Hey, what's up, guys? This is Matt Murphy for Members Nutrition. I want to tell you about the Members Nutrition difference, and I want to encourage you to go over to the Members Nutrition website. Number one, they believe at Members Nutrition that they can sell vitamins and supplements at a lower cost point, and they're doing it every single day at membersnutrition.com. Number two, they want to make these products right here in the United States of America, not from some overseas company, and they do that every single day. I encourage you to go to membersnutrition.com. You'll get 50% off your purchase price at checkout. You don't have to put in any codes. Just go to membersnutrition.com. Once again, membersnutrition.com. What an absolute mess. Hey, it's Dan Manderson. Look at my closets. Unorganized to say the least. Even my window dormer is a train wreck. Stuff is everywhere. Now, luckily, California Closets is coming to my rescue. My personal design consultant, Vince, stopped by, measured, and is now showing me how to become more space efficient and organized on his 3D CAD system. It is amazing. And soon, my space is going to be organized. And yes, even Bandit approves. California Closets, a local company that can customize the storage in any room of your house. California Closets, what can they do for you? Find them online at californiaclosets.com and reach out for your free in-home consultation. An update on gender-affirming legislation in Tennessee. Nashville International Airport providing a test run of some new technology to help prevent near misses. President Biden will be on a plane today. These stories in more at 11 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Thank you, Ken Weaver. It is 1058 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Mike has a comment on what we were just talking about, uh, the, the transgender stuff. Mike, you're on Super Talk. What's going on, man? Yeah, uh, your judges have a whole lot to do with that. To do in, with in your courts, yes. Well, you you look at they're not letting that father have any kind of uh, relationship with his son. Yeah, and uh, uh, the, that, the that, Texas dad and the California mom. Yes, yes, they have a whole lot to do with that. Um, you know, even, even y'all uh, got advertising from uh, Cordell and Cordell, a family. I mean, a, a male law firm. I use them with my divorce. They don't care about the dad. They care about the assets. That's it. I saved my assets, but didn't get to see the kids. It's it's all what that judge does. So that's where that stuff comes from. It stems from that. Well, you got too and, many and liberal that, lawyers. I mean, it, liberal judges. And in that Texas case, he's he's fully putting the blame on the judge, allowing the mom to take the child to California to then give the uh, gender-affirming puberty that's, blockers that's and wrong. drugs and all that. That's oh, straight wrong. I, I'm with you. I'm with you 100%. But a lot of that is your judges. Yep. That's where they that, – there's where your problem lies, your judges. I'm with you, Mike. They need to, they need to kick them out. I, I am – Start again. Totally with you, Mike, and I appreciate the call. It's 11 o'clock on Super Talk 99.7 WTN.
7 o'clock on the dot. I'm Ken Weaver with your top story. Still tracking the potential for some strong to severe weather in the full forecast coming up in two minutes. Tennessee moving closer to requiring schools to notify parents if their kids ask for action to affirm their gender identity, including like using a different name or pronoun. Also, parents or the state's attorney general would be able to sue if they felt the school district was not following this new law. The bill passed the House yesterday, goes back for another vote in the Senate, which had already passed a version of it, before it can go to Governor Bill Lee's desk for his signature if he chooses. Nashville International Airport, part of a new surface awareness initiative to prevent near misses. Here's Jim Ryan. The worst single disaster in commercial airline history came in 1977 when two 747s collided on the ground in the fog at Tenerife in the Canary Islands, killing nearly 600. The technology being tried in Austin, Nashville, Indianapolis, and at Dallas Love Field is intended to give controllers real-time data on every plane in the air and on the ground at those airports regardless of the weather. Yeah, if it proves effective, the technology is likely to land at more airports starting next year. And President Biden's on a plane today. President Biden heads back to his hometown of Scranton, Pennsylvania today for two campaign events, the start of a three-day swing through that critical battleground state. Today, the president delivers remarks on taxes and his economic plan, contrasting it with Donald Trump's. The Biden campaign slamming the former president's tax plan as a, quote, handout to the rich. President Biden will reiterate that nobody making less than $400,000 a year year would see their taxes go up if he gets a second term. And he would prioritize things like extending and expanding the child tax credit and creating a first-time homebuyer credit. Right now, the latest political polls and polling averages from 538.com shows former President Trump leading Biden 44 percent to 41 percent. That's the latest news. Weather's next. I'm Ken Weaver, WTN News. Hey, it's Chris Hand here for my friends at Paul Winkler, Inc. You know Paul. He hosts the Investor Coaching Show here on WTN every Saturday from 3 to 6. We learn a lot on that show. I learn a lot listening to the show. I listened to the show before I got my show here, and that's why I'm so excited to be working with Paul. You may not know this about Paul, though. He started that show after he spent some time studying under an economist who went on to win a Nobel Prize. That's pretty wild. I mean, that's his background. That's how he cut his teeth in this financial planning world. And he's an avid collector of financial planning designations. He has up to eight now. And that's why me and my wife work with Paul. We heard him here on WTN before I got my show. And when I came on board, his was the firm I wanted to work with. And here's why. He holds himself to the highest level of fiduciary status. Because of that, he makes sure that I tell you I'm paid when I do these commercials. I think that is awesome. It's transparent, but I am not paid to be a client. I'm choosing to be a client. And it's because I learned so much from Paul and his team. You can learn from Paul and his team too. And one of the things that you can do with Paul and his team uh, after learning is get advice on your financial future. And when you get that advice, you can be sure it's for your financial future because Paul's team does nothing on commission. That's huge. That's huge. You won't get that uneasy feeling because you can be sure the advice they're giving you is for you and not for them. They'll take a look at your whole financial picture because it's going to be unique to you, and then they'll help you make decisions. Set up a 15-minute phone call today. Start your path towards financial freedom in the future. Just go to paulwinkler.com. That's paulwinkler.com. Populations of animals. I mean, think about the white-tailed deer and and how... When Ed started, and maybe even before Ed a little bit, they started, you know, working to bring these populations back. And now we have these sustainable populations that we can hunt. Yeah. You know, the story of the eastern wild turkey and what's happening with turkeys. So I would consider all these things great successes. Um, The conservation efforts have been worked on by the personnel for years. I would think that it's a great success story for our state. You're going to see some footage from an old film that was produced here in, at the agency in the Game and Fish days, and which shows some things like, you know, the wife taking care of the animal that that the officer, the husband, had to bring home to take care of, you know, because they got a call, and uh, times have changed. Now we have the rehabilitators that help out with that kind of thing. And Thank goodness. We got to be really good friends with some of those little animals. And <laughs> My first commission in 1972. Okay. Yeah. At that time, it was a little different. You know, the whole law enforcement world was different then. Yeah. So anyway, we got the first commission in, in 1972 and, and worked all over the state. It was really great to be able to do that. Pretty much, it, you had one uniform. I noticed in the, in the movie, too, 
everybody wearing ties. You know, for years and years, you had to, if you wore a long sleeve shirt, you had to wear a tie. It didn't matter if you were doing enforcement or standing in a pond or whatever you were doing, you had that tie. Oh, wow. Wow. And then everybody looked forward. There was one date, and it kind of moved. But generally around April the 1st, you switched from long sleeves to short sleeves, and you didn't have to wear a tie. And everybody's going, come on, April 1st. <laughs> <laughs> Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My friend Aaron on Twitter just sent me this headline. Uh, if, you, if you ever see a story that you want to send me, you can send it to me on Twitter too. At Chris Hand on air is the handle. Hit the follow button. I'll follow back. But uh, apparently, th this happened a little while ago. Uh, Alvin Bragg files motion to hold Trump in contempt for alleged gag order violations. Threatens 30 days of jail time. I'm just like, I wish they would. You ever, you ever see that, uh, the meme where it's like a little kid crossing his fingers? Like, oh, I wish you would. Oh, yeah. That's me. <laughs> That's me. Uh, Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg filed a motion Tuesday to hold former, Do former President Donald Trump in contempt of court, claiming he violated the gag order imposed upon him by pu publishing three social media posts relating to two known witnesses in his criminal trial, Michael Cohen and Stormy Daniels. Bragg is urging Manhattan Judge Juan Merchant to also warn Trump that future violations of the gag order can be punished not only with additional fines, but also with a term of incarceration up to 30 days. I would go right on Truth Social if I was him. The corrupt district attorney, Alvin Bragg, is taking away my First Amendment. Uh, Merchant last month imposed the gag order on Trump due to his prior extra extrajudicial statements. Uh, Merchant said they established a su sufficient risk to, to the administration of justice. Merchant ordered that Trump cannot make or direct others to make public statements about witnesses concerning their potential participation or about counsel in the case other than Bragg or about court staff, DA, DA staff, or family members of staff. Merchant also ordered Trump cannot make or direct others to make public statements about any prospective juror or, or chosen juror. Uh, during the first day of the criminal trial and start of jury selection, Manhattan prosecutors suggested Trump had violated the order on three separate occasions on social media. Prosecutors said Trump should be fined $3,000 for the three alleged violations of the gag order at about $1,000 each. Uh, on Tuesday, Bragg's team filed a motion to hold the former president and presumptive Republican presidential nominee in contempt of court. I just, I would just keep doing it. Wouldn't you keep doing it? I, I would, I would keep doing it. Like, if they hold, if they put a former president in jail, it's like, it's just going to be. Nothing but net when it comes November. <laughs> <laughs> this stuff can only can only help him. You know, it's a it's a fascinating fascinating story. As we get more updates out of the courtroom, uh, we'll share them here. Remember yesterday we talked about uh, Mike Johnson and Donald Trump with their uh, new election integrity bill. They they only want citizens voting in the U.S. You remember that? Uh, well, you don't. You weren't here, Mac. But uh, the audience remembers. Yeah, the audience gets it. The audience remembers. Uh, and then uh, the liberals came out and they said, uh, it's already illegal for non-citizens to vote. Ooh, why would you do this? Ooh. Right? That's what they did. Uh, every headline, every talking head, they were screaming, but it's already illegal. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, there's a new headline out. A, a Soros-linked NGO, non-governmental organization, Soros-linked, George Soros, uh, it was just seems like a great guy. Uh, George Soros linked NGO distributes flyers in Mexico telling illegal immigrants to vote for President Biden. Oh, it's already illegal. Uh, they say you do not need documentary proof of citizenship to register to vote. That's what these flyers say. Isn't that, isn't that fascinating? Because well, Mike Johnson and Trump's come out and they say, listen, we want this. Uh, and it's gonna, we're going to make them give pr proof of citizenship to vote. They say, well, it's already illegal. This is dumb. Well, now we're, we're finding out that flyers being distributed 
at a Soros-linked NGO resource center in Mexico are encouraging illegal immigrants to vote for Joe Biden when they get to the U.S. And, and the flyers, which were obtained by muckraker.com, state, you do not need documentary proof of citizenship to register to vote. You can vote if you simply swear you are eligible. This flyer, uh, obviously, is trying to get uh, illegals to vote illegally. It, it's amazing. Muckraker discovered the flyers in a resource center location. Uh, the, the flyers were being distributed to illegal immigrants who used this RCM assistance in coming to the U.S. and were even found on the walls of a porta potty at the location. A little light reading uh, while, while you're using the restroom. In, in a recorded conversation, after being told by a journalist for Muckraker that they were just trying to help as many people as possible before Trump gets elected, the, the founder of this resource center, Gabby Zavala, laughed out loud and said, uh, we're in the same boat. According to the Oversight Project, which is exposing this uh, on Twitter, they're a watchdog group for the Heritage Foundation. Zavala was previously an organizer for La Union del Pueblo Entero, uh, Lupe, which is listed as a partner for George Soros's Open Society Institute. Uh, the watchdog group noted that RCM has significant ties to Soros-funded nonprofits operating in the U United States, including Save the Children, Team Brownsville, Texas, and Angry Tias and Abuelas. Is Tias and Abuelas aunts and uncles? I think that's aunts and uncles. Aunts and grandmas. Aunts and grandmas. Yeah, I think so. We have some uh, angry aunts and grandmas in the Red Pilled Mom Club. <laughs> Save the Children, though, uh, one of their one of their foundations linked to Soros' Open Society Foundation, received over $650,000 from the Soros Open Society Foundation. And they also provided grants to Team Brownsville. Now, according to the Oversight Project, RCM is a fiscally sponsored project of the Asylum Seeker Network of Support, the ASNS, whose 501c3 registration was forfeited in Texas in 2022. However, Zavala, who is the founder and executive director, continued to operate despite the forfeiture. RCM also houses the operations of the Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society, the HIAS. Everybody... Everybody knows the HIAS, uh, which helps illegal aliens enter the U.S. and has also received numerous grants from Soros Open Society Foundation. And the Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas uh, is a former board member of the HIAS. And according to documents obtained by Judicial Watch, the embattled Biden official recently met with some of these entities, including Team Brownsville and Angry, Angry Tias and Abuelas. Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they say angry in Spanish as well? You know what I mean? I don't know. It's like why is why is the name half in Spanish, half in English? Probably because that's the nominal. I, I don't know. Why do you say angry in Spanish? Is it also an a? Uh, I don't think so. If, can you fact check it for me? <laughs> this is this is what this is what bugs me. Angry T is in Abuelas. It's like, okay, well, why is angry and and in English? In Ahada. So it would In Ohado. With an A? E. Well, I'm still upset. <laughs> so the, we have these NGOs on the border saying, hey, uh, when you get to America, vote for Joe Biden and you don't have to prove you're a U.S. citizen. Isn't that... Amazing. Uh, you're next on Super Talk Anon. Uh, you want to talk about illegals voting. What's up? Yes, sir. Uh, so it, is it illegal to vote illegally? Yep. That, that's the crime, right? Yeah. So if I, if I tell you to vote illegally, who is committing the crime? You and me, right? I, I, yeah, I, I think I'm following what you're saying. Go on. So if... Someone is spreading the that uh, thing uh, with the with the papers. Yep. He is committing a crime. Oh, with, without a oh, doubt. But, but, but this is but also that, this that, is that, a, that, this, that, 
This is yeah, in that Mexico. That should involve the F FBI, and we don't have FBI right now. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You're, <laughs> you're, yeah, yeah. You're, you're pretty much. You're, you're hip to the game. You're hip to the game. <laughs> All right. Never mind. All right. I'm glad. I'm glad we cleared that up. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't call the FBI either. They're probably just be like, yeah, we know. We know. Thanks. Thanks for the call. Yeah. So the flyers are being distributed at Soros-linked NGO resource centers in Mexico. So, uh, you know, I think that. Are, would that technically be breaking the law, encouraging people to vote illegally in Mexico? I don't know. But that's what they're doing. They're encouraging illegal aliens to vote for President Joe Biden when they get to the U.S. At George Soros linked resource centers. And when when Mike Johnson and Donald Trump say, hey, we need to firm this up and make sure illegal aliens aren't voting in U.S. elections. Everybody goes, it's already illegal. Robert in Nashville, you're next on Super Talk. What's up, Rob? Hey, how are you, Chris? Good, man. How are you? Uh, a little nervous here. Uh, you're all over the subjects. You're playing 3D chess. You're touching all the pieces. You're just not seeing how they fit together. We may be checkmated at this point, unfortunately. You oh. had, uh, wasn't, uh, I can't remember his name. It, it wasn't Desjardins or Ogles. Who was the other uh, congressman you had on just this Burchett. last week? Burchett. Burchett. Yeah. Awesome dude. Awesome. Awesome. He talked about how razor thin we are in Congress. Yep. We are going to lose another rhino who are no friends to conservatives uh, at the end of this month, which puts us one vote. And he did that on purpose by two days so they couldn't do a special election right off and hold that seat. So you're going to have to go through that whole process. And in May, the beginning of May, we will be one vote up, period. Now, you still have Collins and who's the lady out of Alaska? Um, um, you know who I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's that the lady hate out of Alaska? Trump, hate Trump and have talked about dropping the Republican Party and going independent. Yep. So what's most likely going to happen is the left will stick together. They will vote. Um, I forget. I can't think of the Congress, congressman's name now. And they're, they're guy that they've been putting up the whole time. Uh, anyway, he will become Speaker of the House. It'll only be for about a three- to four-week period, maybe five. They they will still have uh, the Senate and be able to push through anything they want because they'll have all three chambers in that short period of time. Now, if anybody doesn't think, I know they do a lot of stupid things, the Democrats, but they're not stupid. They're smart. Yep. At least the, the ones in charge are, are, are laser, laser smart and they are uber, uber corrupt. Uh, I think we would all agree about that. Yeah, and, they then, they, and then they have their useful idiots underneath. Right. Now, the, we got a Supreme Court decision. This all ties in. Here's your 3D coming together. 9-0 uh, in favor of Trump, supposedly, correct, on the, on the ballot in Colorado? Yep. Which oversaw everything. What, it, what was the fine print in that finding? 9-0, they said, well, if you want to do something like that, kick it back to Congress. They will have Congress for about a three- to five-week period with control of the Senate and the presidency. They will boot Trump. Our October surprise will be in May, and that will be what it is. They will remove him legally in that three- to five-week period from the ballot because the Supreme Court kicked it back to Congress. But that would be, that would be if, they, if they put in a, a motion to vacate the speaker chair. That They would have the votes by then to do that. <clears throat> That's interesting. All they need is a three, three to five week period to do that. If you have control, if you have the majority for three to five weeks, they've already got their ducks in a row. I guarantee it. They're it, not stupid. It's an interesting theory. Um, you know, I, well, I, I hope that uh, you are 100 percent wrong. Can I give you the last piece of this? Yeah, with do the it. Illegals. Yeah. The illegals will be there along with booting Trump from the ballot legally. They will basically give citizenship to all of these illegals and solidify their power basically for the next three generations i would say well that's may, now that's, they abs may lose. that's absolutely the plan yeah 
and they may lose the Senate for one cycle, but everybody forgets about that. The Senate is kind of split, and you get half half election on every two years kind of thing, right? So mm-hmm. we may control it in November, but by November, Trump will be off the ballot, and illegals will be able to vote. That's interesting. That's an interesting theory, Robert. I appreciate your call, man. Have a great day. Hey, you too, man. God bless. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how that would go down. It's a very interesting theory. It's a very interesting theory. I got a text here on the Members Nutrition text line, 1517. It says, a lot of people don't realize how easy it is to gain the system. I moved here legally a couple of years ago. I'm not yet a U.S. citizen as it takes four years from when you get your green card. However, when we got our driver's license, there was a box to check where you could register to vote. It really is as simple as that. We're honest individuals, so we didn't check the box, but I think a lot of Americans are not aware of how easy it is to play the system. We love this country, but we're sick of all the illegals coming over and gaming the system and cheating their way in. It took us a very long time to move here the right way, and we're so proud of what we achieved and honored to live in this great country. As soon as I am able to vote as a U.S. citizen, I will be voting conservative for the rest of my life. God bless you. It's 1121 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Hey, it's Chris Hand for my friends at Busy Bee Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. It is that time of year uh, where the heat's on in the morning to get the chill out of the air, and then the AC is on in the afternoon. We found ourselves doing that just yesterday. Well, if you haven't gotten your system serviced the right way, the Busy Bee way with Busy Bee Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling, and you're flip-flopping back and forth between the heat and the AC, you are essentially waiting for a problem to pop up this time of year. So don't wait be proactive, and keep your units in tip-top shape. Whether you need that annual maintenance or you need to repair or replace your AC system before the heat gets here and stays here, call the guys who I trust, Busy Bee Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Maybe you've been waiting to replace that AC system. Kicking the can down the road because it went out at the end of the last season. If you need to replace it, you're not going to find a better value on replacement systems than Busy Bee. They'll offer up to 12 months with no payment, no interest, with approved credit, and it'll pay in so many ways to sign up for that added rewards and savings by becoming a Beehive member. Me and my wife, we're Beehive members. You hear Dan Mandis talking about a bee, being a Beehive member. It is as good as it sounds. You get front-of-the-line service, thorough annual maintenance on your plumbing, heating, and air systems, no overtime charges 24-7, and 10% off all repairs. It will pay for itself to join the Beehive. Plus, Busy Bee will always come see you on Saturdays. They have those convenient availability hours, so you'll never be stuck waiting all weekend long. Busy Bee, your rude pro partner. For satisfaction guaranteed, call my friends at Busy Bee Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. 615-775-7833. That's 615 615- 775-7833 or online at busybhvac.com.
Got a big traffic problem in Williamson County. I-840 eastbound is closed just west of Columbia Pike for an extended period of time due to police activity. Traffic is being diverted to Carter's Creek Pike, and it says expect significant delays and seek an alternate route. And we've got the top stories for you coming up at 1130. And an update on this traffic problem I just told you about on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Thank you, Ken Weaver. It is Super Talk 99.7 WTN. We had a, a guy calling a minute ago, Robert, and he unveiled a, a what, what would you call it? A nightmare scenario? Nightmare yeah, scenario? Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. yeah. Where uh, we, because everybody's, you know, leaving Congress, the, the Republicans and the rhinos, they're, they're giving up seats. So our majority's shrinking and shrinking and shrinking that if we had somebody put a motion to vacate the speaker... Then we'd get Hakeem Jeffries, and the Dems would have Congress and the Senate, and then they would use that to remove Trump from the ballot. And I don't know. I, I love I love the theories. I, I don't know how that happens in real life. But Dave, uh, our favorite Hebrew, uh, is wanting to respond to that nightmare scenario. Dave, what's up, man? How are you? What, what's going on, guys? How are y'all? Good. What, what do you think about the nightmare scenario? Well... You know, so I, I, I'll start by saying this. I, I I turned 45 in the middle of March, and, you know, so I, ca I, I can't afford a McLaren, and I can't afford tickets to the Monaco Grand Prix. <laughs> uh, but I I dropped about $1,600 on tricking out uh, a pistol for myself. Nice. Happy birthday. And thank you. Thank you. And so I said to my wife, I was like, you know, I, I, I love this gun, and it's great, and maybe I should have thought this through a little bit more because carrying around a full-size gun isn't the best idea. I was like, but I want to get another gun before election season because you know if those schmucks take over Congress, you can bet your butt that uh, the first thing they're going to do is get an assault weapons ban. And my wife said, well, it's... Why, why would you want to get another, you know, she said, I understand where you're coming from, but why get another pistol? You should probably get another rifle. And after listening to that nightmare, nightmare scenario, I'm going to go on Palmetto State Armory's website and get me an AK probably by the end of the month. <laughs> your, your wife sounds incredibly based, Dave. Well, that's because she is, I call her Mrs. Springsteen. She's the boss. <laughs> uh you know, when, when, when your wife, uh, you know, she who must be obeyed, uh, well, that's why I married her. She's the brains of the operation. I love it. Uh, but, but, yeah, I mean, if, you know, I, I, I watch, uh, you know, I, I won't plug his YouTube channel on your show, but there's this dude on YouTube who uh, he always shows uh, ATF showing up at people's doors. You know, hey, we, we just, we just want to see your guns. Well, do you have a warrant? Well, we can make this really difficult for you if, if you don't show us your... Anybody who doesn't believe that there's a national gun registry, just just go on YouTube and watch some of these videos. They, they, they know who has guns. But all that aside, uh, if, if they were to, A, take over uh, Congress because some self aggrandizing schmuck along the lines of a uh, Matt Gates decided that they wanted to fi file another motion to vacate the speaker's chair. And, you know, to me, that's, that's all Matt Gates is, is a self aggrandizing schmuck. Really? I like, I like Matt Gates. I, you know, I did before that happened. Fair. All right. I, I did before that happened because, because now we are ever, we, we are ever that much closer to the precipice. And I mean, it's, it's not just, you know, I, 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 I've always been, you know, I've always liked guns ever since I was a kid. I collect guns. I love guns, but it's not just guns. It's everything, everything that these people have been champing at the bit to do that a Republican house has stood in the way of them doing for four years they will not have that barrier anymore. And if you think that the Supreme, we already know that Biden doesn't give a rat's took us what the Supreme Court says. Fair. That's fair. So, I mean, you, 
it 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 is literally the nightmare scenario. I hear you, Dave. Yeah, I, I just, Hey, hey man, ahead. I'm sorry. No, 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 you're good. You're good. I appreciate your call. We got a break for news, but I, I right. hear you. And there's, See you later. hey, take it easy, bud. Thanks for calling. And there's a bunch of people on the members' nutrition text line that also are saying the nightmare scenario is legit. I don't know. I, I'd have to see it to believe it. It's 11:31 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. I'm Ken Weaver with your top stories again. 840 in Williamson County eastbound is closed just west of Columbia Pike for an extended period of time because of some police activity there. Traffic is being diverted to Carter's Creek Pike. Right now in Tennessee, a bill is just one vote away from Governor Lee's desk that would require school districts to notify parents if their kids ask for action to affirm their gender identity. Things like using a different name or pronoun. This comes after the New York Post reports more than 3.2 million U.S. public school students are covered by guidance that blocks parents from knowing whether their child identifies as a different gender in the classroom. And it could become federal policy if President Biden's Title IX proposals are approved next month. Money News, Jim Ryan. Investors are enjoying at least a partial turnaround from yesterday's broad downturn. Late in the morning, the Dow was ahead 108 points. The Nasdaq Composite was up 7 tenths of 1%. The S&P remained in negative territory. That's the latest news. Weather is next. I'm Ken Weaver, WTN News. Hey, it's Chris Hand here to tell you about my friends at MembersNutrition.com. You've heard us talking about MembersNutrition.com. They're bringing you vitamins and supplements at a fraction of the retail cost, and uh, they're all made here in America. If you want to jumpstart your lifestyle to a, a healthy lifestyle, you do it at membersnutrition.com. You've heard us talking about the Youthful Cleanse by Daily Defense. I've taken the Youthful Cleanse by Daily Defense, and it's a great way to catapult yourself into a healthy lifestyle. It will assist in removing that stored waste and toxins in your body. Because let's be honest, the air we breathe, the food we eat, the stress in our life, we're building up that toxicity in our bodies. And the Youthful Cleanse by Daily Defense will help you flush all of that out. It'll cleanse your colon, your liver, help restore that gut health and balance, and it'll promote weight management. This is a great start. But from there, where do you go? Well, you can go a ton of different directions on membersnutrition.com. No matter what you need, immunity supplements, weight loss detox like the cleanse, men's health, women's health, relaxation supplements, they have it all at membersnutrition.com. And you can join membersnutrition.com and get even more discounts on the products that they offer. And, and did I mention that these products are made here in the USA? Not way, way far away in a foreign land. They're made here in America. You can't say that about the vitamins and supplements you're buying off the shelves at the big box store, but you can say that about the vitamins and supplements you get at MembersNutrition.com. So take your health into your own hands and do it at MembersNutrition.com.
1138 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. You can find me on Twitter through social Instagram at Chris Hand on air. Mac Mori, my producer, is on Twitter as well at Mac J Mori 25. He hosts a podcast behind the box score. If you ever want to get your sports fix without the political bias, uh, Mac does that for you. Straight sports. Straight sports. Mine is here. Uh, what do you got? When's, what's that coming up? Uh, probably be Thursday. It'll come out. Record behind the box score. Yeah, behind the box score. Wherever podcasts are sold. That's it. Yep. Uh, I'm getting texts on the Members Nutrition text line, Mac. Uh, what is happening on 840? People are saying Dietz on 840, please. Uh, eight. There's an exit off 840 in Thompson Station. Something's happening. Yeah, so I just saw a close due to police activity. I see here on News 2 WKRN reporting that a portion of 840 closed after an excavator struck bridge supports under the roadway, and they have a picture of it. He's, the, I mean, the excavator's right on the bridge, and obviously it's just too high up. Hit some of those supports. You can see them, uh, that they're damaged. It's unknown how long this could, you know, close this portion. This is the eastbound lanes of the interstate. Um, they closed right now from Carter's Creek exit, all the way over to Columbia Avenue. Okay, so orient me. What part of 840 is that? If I'm coming from Murfreesboro, um, is it like headed towards Mount Juliet or headed towards Franklin? It's headed towards Mount, or uh, it's south of Franklin, and so it'd be headed towards Murfreesboro. Okay. On eastbound. So. That's so that's make, good for you. It's gonna make traffic nice. <laughs> so does that mean that I'm I'm stuck with 24? I believe believe so. All right. Yeah, 9455 says Franklin. Okay. So, do they know if it was if there's structural damage to the bridge? Yeah, I don't know. Work. It was the excavator was working on train tracks below the interstate when it hit the bridge's support beams. You can see, yeah, the train tracks are right below this bridge, and I guess. The guy or the person operating it just forgot the ceiling. <laughs> you know, how much height you had. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's rough. That <sighs> is rough. It's coming out of your check, bud. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> I mean, how much does a bridge go for these days? <laughs> a bridge in this economy? Oh, it's fair. It's fair. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. All right, so. That's, that'll be something fun to look forward to on your ride home. Uh, we'll, we'll update you as as we find out more. Uh, some, 6175 said he's sterrowed. So there's a that's, a, that's a Massachusetts reference. There's a bridge in Massachusetts on Sturrow Drive. And uh, every year as people come in for college, this bridge, you don't have the clearance on it. So, like, every year as people are coming in and moving into college, you have U-Hauls just smashing into this bridge. Oh, gosh. Uh, so somebody said he's sterrowed. I, I get the <laughs> reference. I had to explain the reference. Uh, 4295 says 840 is impassable. Impassable. Wild. West of Spring Hill, yeah. Yeah, nowhere. it's nowhere near 24, I don't think. So I think okay. you'll actually be good. All right, bet. Yeah. Little West is 65. Right. So you're telling me I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Let's move on. Everybody else, I feel bad for you. <laughs> I, I mean, my morning commute is the craziest thing. I know everybody deals with it. But when you come in from Murfreesboro, it's like you don't know what you're dealing with. No, nah, dude, Murfreesboro is nuts. It's like it it's, uh, is one of the worst commutes I've ever dealt with. And I, I grew up. 45 minutes outside of Boston and would drive into Boston every day. But like the traffic would be predictable. Yeah. So it was, and it was consistently bad on 24. It's like, you don't know what you're getting. No idea. Could be two hours. Could be 20 minutes. It's the craziest thing. Uh, <laughs> Trevor said 840 is racist. <laughs> this is probably what happened. <laughs> it's been a while since we've played the, is it racist game? Oh yeah, you're right. You remember that game? Yeah. That was pretty early on. Yeah, that was like early in the show. You can uh, you can Google anything and, and write, is it racist? And it turns out it is. Yeah. Like anything at all. Give me something. Like we found, uh, do shower curtains. Shower curtains. Racist. Hold on. <laughs> yep. Shower curtains are racist. And you can buy racist shower curtains. 
Who raises shower curtains for sale? Yeah. <laughs> Very true. Very true. It's, uh, it's amazing. Any, anything can be racist. Uh, you just have to Google it. Any, anything at all. So that's, that's hilarious. Uh, there, there were some other things I wanted to get to today that we have not had uh, the, the uh, opportunity to. The, the border is one of the biggest issues in the country. And uh, the illegal immigrants, we, we're finding out, cost taxpayers over $150 billion. Those are the latest estimates published by the Federation for American Immigration Reform last March. Uh, shows that the millions of illegal aliens residing across the United States cost taxpayers more than $150 billion annually. And if that doesn't make you upset, uh, I want to tell you how much uh, Hunter Biden has cost us. Because that, this one this one makes me just as just as angry. Uh, this past year, uh, well, we just recently learned, sorry, not this past year. In, in 2021, taxpayers paid more than $4.5 million on Secret Service protection for Hunter Biden. A new report shows that the Secret Service spent more than four and a half million between 21 and 22 protecting Hunter Biden while he was living in his six million dollar Malibu, California home. Uh, according to financial transactions obtained by the Daily Mail through a FOIA request, the agency spent nearly thirty thousand dollars a month to rent out a property next to the president's son. The report also noted that the agency spent more than two point eight million on government credit cards. Uh, 1.12 spent on hotel rooms, 632,000 spent on rental cars. And, and in total, the agency spent 4.5 million to protect the president's son during that time, not including the cost to pay the secret service agents. This is after it was revealed in April 22, uh, that the agency was paying $30,000 a month to rent Hunter's neighbor's house. Uh, retired Secret Service agent Don Mihalik told ABC that the agency renting out the property for its employees is the cost of doing business for the Secret Service. Four and a half million dollars to protect Hunter Biden. One hundred and fifty billion dollars for taxpayers for illegal aliens. Are, are you furious yet with how your tax dollars are being spent? Well, get ready because uh, we need we need more. Uh, especially for illegal aliens. San Diego is now getting $39 million additional uh, for illegal aliens. The migrant activists in San Diego, California, they're celebrating, high-fiving. Uh, they got an additional $39 million in federal funding for illegal border crossers, even though uh, many people say that the money is being misspent. Almost $20 million of the funding is from the Department of Homeland Security, and it's targeted to support migrants as they wait for the outcome of their immigration proceeding court cases after federal officials drop them off in the county. That's from KJ, KGTV. They reported that on April 12th. Uh, Rep. Juan Vargas, a Democrat out of California, celebrated the funding, saying this funding will make sure they have the resources they need to continue their important work to provide migrant communities with food, shelter, and other critical services. $40 million additional. 40 million. Governor Gretchen Whitmer out of Michigan, uh, she's seeking more funds for illegal aliens. She's actually not as much as San Diego, but Gretchen Whitmer is asking for $8 million in state funds for illegal immigrants' legal fees, legal f just to pay the legal bills. Uh, the state proposal states uh, that growing the state's population is a key factor in boosting the economy and building shared prosperity across the state. So we need we need eight million for illegal aliens, uh, legal services to to build shared prosperity across the state in Michigan. The funding for the upcoming fiscal year would be used to help pay attorneys to represent illegal aliens in immigration proceedings. The proposed budget states that asylum seekers could help boost Michigan's population, thus boosting the economy. So you got to get eight million dollars. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be better to just use $8 million to make Michigan a better state to boost the economy? Maybe. But they say that this would expand and improve immigrate, immigrant integration efforts in Michigan through grants for wraparound supports that will facilitate the success of newcomers. They use the word. They said the thing. Services many and may include case management, transportation, legal services, language, language access supports, digital literacy, 
and learning. The proposal states that growing the state's population is a key factor in boosting the economy. $8 million for illegal aliens. This is insane. And this comes after this comes after in Michigan where they said, uh, listen, we're going to offer you $500 per month for up to 12 months for the newcomer rental subsidy. So if you, if you want to take a newcomer into your home, you get 500 bucks a month. In this economy, that's low, right? I mean, what does a two-bedroom apartment cost? Two grand? Yeah, probably a little over. And you want to give you want me to give one of my bedrooms to a newcomer for five hundred dollars a month? <laughs> yeah, sounds good. The math doesn't work out there. <laughs> it's eleven forty nine on Super Talk ninety nine seven WTN.
Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. It's 1155. Matt Murphy joining me in studio. Uh, did you know that there's a new underneath the score box coming out very soon <laughs> to the podcast scene? I did not know that. Underneath the... I thought it was underneath the scoreboard. It was behind the scoreboard for a while. <laughs> and then you he's know, changed the name. You know what you should call it? <laughs> Under, underneath the bleachers. Nah, that's it. Oh, that's the one. I like that. That's what we used to hang out underneath the bleachers during high school football games and smoke cigarettes. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm on top of the scorecard. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's like a good that. one. Why didn't you do that? Why didn't you do that? Why do you call it that? <laughs> it's behind the box score. Wherever yeah. you find your podcast. That's okay. That's, <laughs> that's a, all right. That's I, mean, okay that one's all, I mean, what's a box score? I mean, how many people know what a box score is anymore? <laughs> ESPN. Go on the e app. ESPN? Go on the app. You'll see. Look at any I'm, game. Check the box score. I don't like ESPN because I found out that they have a, <laughs> I was about to use his a, an overwhelming conservative. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's what I've been told. Yeah, that's, what I heard. that's what I heard. ESPN, not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Murphy? What do you got going on today, know, man? man? You got fun We're stuff planned? Handling the world's business. I, I have a surprise guest to everyone Ooh. involved because it just came down about 30 minutes ago or so, but... Um, a man known by most who is uh, currently the mayor of Knox County, who a lot of people speculate running for governor in the next uh, election cycle, Mayor Glenn Jacobs will Whoa. be stopping by our studio at about 1235. This he's going to be here in studio? In studio. Man, I'm a big fan. You should, you should, he's a fa hand is a fan, hand's a fan. You should stick around. I'm thinking about it. I mean, he's a good guy. Good guy. I've had an opportunity to meet him and interview him on a couple of occasions. Have not had him in studio. Uh, so I'm excited about that. That's a lot of fun. Uh, we'll talk about, you know, obviously, you know, we'll talk about the Trump trial that is the trial of the century. It's the trial of the century. I, Maury, Maury made a good point. I heard you guys figuring and, that out this and, morning. Uh, I like that. I, was, I, I liked his point. It, it, it's a new century from, uh, from the last one. I don't know. I see. And I was thinking, I've what, I can't really pinpoint it. And I guess that's to your point, Maury, but. I've watched a number of Dateline NBCs with some pretty good true crime stories that happened this century. So I don't know if I would call it the trial of the century, but, you know. When he comes in, Mayor Glenn Jacobs, can you go, uh, you got to give me audio, Maury. Oh, oh he got you busted. Got audio. He's That's on you, buddy. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh! oh! It's, a, right. it's a double O! <laughs> All right, so when the mayor comes in, you got to go, It's him! It's the mayor of Knox County! It's Kane! So, I don't know that I've ever told him this. Uh, I might today. I, I have, I've made it a point in my two and a half years in Nashville, Tennessee, in the times that I've had an opportunity to interview Glenn Jacobs, I've made a point to never reference him as Kane. Or to really never bring up his wrestling career. Really? I just, it's because of, it's what I do. I try to run counter to the prevailing wind. And, I mean, everybody loves him as Kane. Everybody knows him as Kane. I was never that big of a wrestling fan. Don't tell Glenn Jacobs. <laughs> so, you know. I feel like wrestling and politics are the exact same thing. It's pretty much, They, yeah, they put sure. on a show in front, mm -hmm. and there's a lot more interesting things going on behind the curtain. Oh, that's right. They're, they're, they're deciding how everything's going to turn out before they go out and battle. Yeah, right? exactly. Exactly. It's, it's, that's the way I feel about the Republicans and the Democrats nowadays, certainly. Yeah. It's it's uh it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, and also, I, I don't know I don't know how much you've been into this. Um, I know uh, some are all in, some are not. But uh, it appears that the uh, that education scholarship bill, the much discussed uh, education scholarship bill, is dead, 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 dead. And I'll give you some of the details on that. All right, later. It is what it is. Yeah, you know? I liked it in theory. I didn't. There wasn't anything that really made me excited as I saw people talking about it more and more and more. Devil's always in the details. Yep. You know, so uh, it appears wherever you are on it, I'm just I'm just here to report the news, baby. It is D O A. Time of death eleven fifty nine forty five. Yeah, Sad. on the sixteenth. I'll give of you the April. cause of death too. All right, <laughs> Super Talk ninety nine seven W T N.